Success is not uh, just by, by, by accident. You know, how to plan it. You know? And so if, if you don't plan it and you believe in uh, spiritism, that some Juju man can do quick, 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 quick for you to succeed. So can I be rich? I don't, Ghana, I don't see any rich person in Ghana. No. Nope. Ghana here? No. As far as I know, there's not even one single soul in Ghana who is rich. No. Who, 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 tell me one. What is your tell definition for riches then? A rich person is a person who has got wealth, right? Wealth, a lot of wealth, you know, and also giving it out. You have got the, 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 the bank, you could say the billionaire, dollar, dollar money, dollar terms, big money in a bank, right? Yes. And you also give impact to society. society. You know, you can't just stand the radio and make men and say, I'm rich. You get a government contract, you, you go and inflate the, 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 the prices and say, You are rich. No. So if a government is not there, you're not then, there. Then, then you are not there. So that's official richness. It's not rich. It's cooked rich. Welcome back to the YouTube channel and I hope you all have been enjoying the previous episode of a billionaire living in the forest. But I want to ask you a question. Answer me in the comment section. Would you ever live in a forest like this? Being so successful in life, would you ever go back to your roots? I believe that going back to our roots is very, very important. And this is why I am saying that the founder of Casapreco is a living legend. Most of you were telling me that why I never mentioned Alombo Beaters. I'm so sorry. The legendary behind Alombo Beaters is living in a forest. The man behind Signature is living in the forest. The man behind Awake Mineral Water is living in the forest. The man behind Royal Crown, I mean a factory that produces curtains in Ghana, is living in the forest. And he's living in the forest just to make impact in a society. My coming here is to give back to society, especially my roots, where I was, uh, I was born. born. I hope each and every one of you, including myself, will learn something new from this man. I don't think this is content, this is a masterclass on its own. So stay tuned, there are more episodes coming up, but all I'm pleading with you is to like this video. Share it so that other people can have a piece of this man. Because this world is a big stage, hmm. everybody will live at a point in time will depart. Yeah. You know, so once it says teach, you choose your character. Like a film, right? Yeah, you choose your character. Just like going to the stadium. The stadium, you have the VIP. Yeah. You have the popular stand, right? You know the VIP is a bit pricey. Yep. Popular stand is a common. Yeah. So you can choose to go to the VIP or can go choose to go to, a, to, the, to the popular stand. Yes. But for me, I wanted to choose the VIP. And if there is any TV station out there who would love to work with that so that we will premiere this masterclass on their TV stations, I'll be so grateful. But I hope it's not going to be for free. Thank you. We are now entering the backyard garden. You have your own backyard garden? I have my own backyard garden. I just started. Okay. Because I told you, um, I just came in here about almost two weeks ago. But I had a land there already. But I bought a land. Okay. And uh, with the intention that I'll grow what I eat here. So we call it Eden Garden. Eden Garden is where uh, you, you plant everything that you consume, you know. Oh. So I mean, that thing that we've seen there yeah. is the chicken droppings. You know, about, about a thousand pieces. You're going to use it to fertilize the, 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 the land, you know, organically. I don't want to use uh, chemical, chemical. chemical fertilizer. So that's why um, you leave it there for about two to three weeks to decompose. And then you go and tilt it, the land, you know. But, but, but why are you growing your own food then? I, I always remember uh, our, our former president, our champion, Kara Champon. Hmm. Huh? President, feed yourself. And then the, um, I think the president coming to talking about 
uh, settlers, you know, instead of going to import onion from Burkina Faso and uh, probably banana, uh, plantain from Africa, you know, you cannot be in this thick forest. You just look at it, thick yeah. forest, green. You know, I'm buying things like that. No. So, if I'm here and uh, I don't grow things here, I believe I'm so, so changing myself. You know, because if you grow, it will come. <laughs> exactly. Uh -huh. So, in the next, let's say after six months, mm. the only thing that I will buy probably salt. Because right now, where we are going, I'm making structure to rear uh, sheep fowls and pigs apart from the the um, uh, garden eggs that I'll, I'll be planting what you know. about what about fish you don't like fishes I, I have fish you have fish I, I, I think I have um, th four fish pond now really yeah yeah you have mud fish catfish and I have tilapia it's like you do everything here I, 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 that's why I'm, that's why I'm here that's why I'm, I'm good I, I, I love living here but 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 why what I know you're born here, mm -hmm. and after spending your whole life in Accra, mm -hmm. you decided to come back here. Why would you do that? Because this is the time to enjoy your life. But, uh, you know, for me to, I believe in giving back to your roots. Wow. Giving back to your roots is, had been my dream, right? Because, you see, if, you don't give back. These villagers, they are sort of cut off, cut off completely. Here, there was no light, there was no road, there was no water, there was no, uh, there, there's no um, hospital, you know, uh, no police station. So like they were living virtually like, like animals, virtually. Because if you are sick, you die. My coming here is to give back society, especially my roots, where I was, uh, I was born. born. My, my, my surgeon to America also taught me that, because I used to go to some villages in America, hmm. small village, but every, they have everything. Small school, small um, restaurant, small mall, right? So the same thing that I cannot do it like in America, but helping them to also enjoy life a bit, uh -huh, because I believe in what I call uh, empowerment. Yeah. Uh, yeah, human empowerment. So if you are rich, if God has blessed yes, you, you, why don't you also impact on somebody's life? Why? Why do you have to take everything and invest in the say, treasure bills, say in Accra, you know, and uh, enjoy all the goodies, right? Yeah. When I was in America, I, in fact, actually, I was uh, in a uh, oceanfront apartment. You know, I could easily be a boat owner, go and be riding on the sea, enjoy cash fish and throw them inside, and you go 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 to the Gulf and be drinking beer. But I left it. When I, when I was coming, my friend told me, "I I, I you should go to Ghana, Africa." Yes. Yeah? Are, are you crazy? But I left all these things. I want to come to Ghana, not even in Accra, but not in Cape Coast, but to my village where I was born. So that at least, after I finish my assignment on this earth, right, mm. at least I will leave a legacy here. So the whole world, you know, if you want to actually, it's not a money, but legacy. Uh -huh. That's very, very important. That's why they, they, they say that uh, the number of years you live on this earth doesn't matter what you do. Uh -huh. So my, my point is to leave a legacy. Now, I don't want to leave it in Accra because Accra they have all the goodies, but it deprived people. You know, the Bible said, uh, if you are not sick, you don't, you don't need a doctor. Yeah. Uh -huh. So these guys, these people here, they don't have anything. But probably through my situation with them. Uh, what, are, what have you done in the village so far since you came? Since beginning, I mean, I started doing this when I was about almost 20, 26 years ago. 26 years. Yes, then I started helping them. You know, uh, when, when I was working at Vaku, mm. I came here and I saw that one of their structure, school structure was collapsing. 
So I bought two packets of iron sheets from my salary. Not, oh, a, not, not as a businessman, you know, as a salary worker. You know, I had not even worked more than six months. You know, I bought two. The man who bought it is still alive. I can call him for you to, tomorrow. You know, so okay, I've seen that this uh, building is collapsing because they were selling it with, with sheep and goats at that time. The school? The school, yeah. Only one school, one small school for one teacher. I said, okay, so why, why can't I buy two packets of iron sheets to roof it for them? Because it was, it was, it was um, um, leaking all over, you know. So as a worker, I said, I don't know what came over me that as a salary worker, I used my, part of my salary to buy that uh, two packets of iron sheets for them. You know, so that sort of this has been with me for a very long time. Um, because at that time, there was no road here. No road at all. No, no cows coming here. When I was here, living here, cows didn't come in here. I'm telling you, you can ask those the grown-ups. If you hear that car has come, if you hear a panic fufu, you all leave your fufu and we'll go and see the car. Ha. That was how the village was when I was growing up. You know. So, does it mean you did a road for them? This road, I did it, but the bridges, the olden days, I think I saw the government and they did the, 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 the road, the bridges, because that time, we had two wood mm, yeah. on, the, on, the, on, the, on the river. Mm. So we, we, if, we can't even pass, we can't even pass on. By the point the government came to do the, the road, right? and from that time, I've been taken over. Not the, not the big one, but from the small one, they just into this place. Mm. Yes, I remember some four years ago, I had to hire Buddhist, two, two Buddhists, yes, and then clear it. When you were coming, I didn't know where you pass here. I, I, I use this road. I, I, this road, eh? So you see that is uh, newly graded. Yeah. I did it when I came here. I did it when I came here. Yes, not that they could mend it. I did it. And so this is the farm. How do you feel any time you come to your farm? It's a dream come true. It's a dream come true because um, it is what you wish. Mm. If you wish to eat a bank coin, get a bank coin. <laughs> you know, your space is elevated, elevated. So the same thing. If I came here, I'm very happy. Because I didn't come here to eat and sleep. I came here to farm and also to tell Ghanaians who have got a bit of money. Now, I believe they also invest in agri. It's better. You see, I went to Germany some years back and I went to a restaurant and they, they told me that very soon the rich people will be coming. I said, ah, this village, where come the rich people? They said the farmers. Actually, uh, about seven o'clock, they were coming with their heart with their cigar. And they were, they, they were enjoying drinking wine, you know, and conversing, you know. But I don't know why Ghanaian rich people, rather, most of them refuse to go into farming. Oh, For me, I wish, let's say, two, two, um, six months, I'm um, like, we're going, you get your cabbage here, you get your watermelon, you get your cantaloupe. I say, oh, my, my, uh, my, my nephews, get this since, you know, small cassava, small yam. No, that's life. Because for me, I'm, I'm, I'm retired. You know, as a retiree, as a golden age, you have to, you know, engage with your passion. Yeah. No more for money, right? Uh -huh. at, the age, at this age, I'm, I'm no more looking for money. You know, it's, it's passion. What does sustain my life? You know, so in, in, my, in my edition there, I've got a draft. I will play with my, with my colleagues, friends. You know, sometimes you come to the farm, and they've been, you go a weekend, you play our draft to make, you know, soul and body to get to, together, put it together, you know. So for me, it's a fulfillment that uh, I can buy, I can buy the maize, I can buy the, I can buy the tomatoes, mm. I can buy the pepper, right? Mm. But you have a few, so you're going to make a, um, a, um, a decision here, a shed here, you know, yeah, right. a shed here, when I come, you sit under it, and then you, you'll be watching your... Uh, your, 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 your process. So you, you believe that one can become a rich man by just farming? So that question, hmm. that question that you're asking me, right? Yeah. If you go to Brazil, okay. eh, go to Brazil, that sugar and alcohol that you consume, yeah. they are from uh, the, the, the farmers. You know, yeah. You can, uh, the answer is yes, very, very yes. But uh, the youth of Africa thinks that it's not possible, including myself. Why is that possible? Because we were trained that we should just go to school. No, you see, that is the, uh, the erroneous thing about 
our education. You know, go to school, get a degree, study hard, get a degree, and get a job. That's how we are trained, right? But it's a wrong thing. It's a wrong perception. You know, school can give you education, uh, knowledge. It doesn't give you wisdom, right? Yeah, wisdom is um, at home. You see, it's inborn. So, education without wisdom, right? It's like a um, soup without salt. Uh, so, uh, yeah, the raw education is not the best. You see, if you don't ask wisdom, education can swell you up and vomit you raw. It's a sprinkler, right? Yeah. So, there's a tank. Okay. So, I'm going to do all year round farming. See, the, the most, um, the sad part of our farmers is that we don't engage in irrigation, yeah. you know. So if you rely on the weather, you know, the weather too cannot be predicted. What is like unpredictable because of the climate change, right? So if you are doing farming, especially those who have land along the, uh, the, the big rivers, Vortes and those uh, and Kubres, I don't know this country who has just poured our river bodies, yeah. you know. The best is to do ir irrigation. That time, the, that, that, well, that thing, you have control over your crops. Okay, so there's no lean season and there's no um, dry season. That, that, uh, dry season, right? Uh -huh. So look at our farmers. They, that, they do tomatoes, they farm uh, tomatoes farming, there's a cloth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they, are, they have nothing to do. They, they just add, 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 sell it cheap or waste it. And when there is a scarcity, you don't have it because it didn't rain. So there's no tomatoes or there's no pepper because it didn't rain, okay? So if, if you are able to do even a small portion and bring in, I think an agri officer was here last three days, you know, yeah, to get in these agri officers to help you, you know, to maximize your yield, yeah. right? It's better to than relying on the, than the weather. The weather, you cannot predict it, especially once you are cutting the trees, mm. right? Yeah, uh, the, 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 the rain pattern, changes yeah so i'm trying to but it, it, you, you started your farm right after retirement or you, you had farms when you had your factories too i have a farm at who car tech car tech okay we plant cassava it's that's a large farm but well, you grow cassava that's only cassava you, you use the for eternal for eternal yes for eternal for now <sighs> we are supplying the um, uh, akra brewery with the eagle beer oh. We're supplying them uh, cassava flour. You know, cassava has got about 32 uses. Cassava. You can use it for agbolima, I do it for uh, the way food, eh? Benku. Yeah, benku. You can use it for ethanol. You can use it for glue. Eh? You can use it for beer. You can use it for chips. You know, cassava chips. Nigeria, I think um, every bread has contained about 15% of cassava, cassava. In, in Nigeria. Hmm. You know, so. Where, uh, where I'm from, we only use cassava for fufu. Uh -huh. That's I have a big stomach. Eh? Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, the first time I found out that cassava is used for ethanol, I'm oh, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, no yeah, yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. We are doing it now, not that we do it, we are doing it now. But, you know, it's only a small position from the farm to uh, for our, our operation. It's just a small farm, right? Yeah. So if you are able to make it large, big, then we can get all our um, raw materials from uh, the farm. You see, so if you are able to slow down a bit of the importation, right, uh -huh, that's where our economy can be economy. But, you know, import oriented economy can never survive. You know, if you are importing everything, including a toothpick, what, what tells you that the economy will uh, be sustainable? No, it can't. To encourage Ghanaians, you know, to do industrialization, one district. Uh, is it, eh? one, one district, one factory. One factory. It didn't happen. Why didn't it, why didn't it happen? Let me ask you. I don't, even, I don't even know myself. Yeah, but I think it was too politicized. Exactly. Uh, uh -huh. uh, yeah, I, I, I think Probably so. Probably the, the because it, it was think well. Because it, it, it was something that I've always been talking about, that we need industrial revolution. That's it. And when His Excellency started preaching about that, I was so excited. But um, I started doing my own research and I realized take advantage that. of it. Yeah. Yeah. They thought government the government going to do uh, factories for them. For them, yeah. You know? Yeah. But government factories mm. are not sustainable. Yeah. You know, we had Blast Star Line collapse, right? We have a, a, is it 
even the, our, our flight, eh? Ghana, Ghana Airways collapsed. Collapse. So many factories. Nkrumah you know, built a lot. A for lot, that. you know, yes. Do, yes do, you, do you believe in ideologies of Nkrumah? For me, I don't believe in socialist ideology, no, at all. I believe in capitalism. Uh, yeah, survival. I don't believe that let's cook, everybody eat. What about the lazy people? When I came here last, last when I came here the other time, here on this farm, <laughs> uh, the farmers have groups, right? And they were turning the land like this. You know, going like this, mm. like this. All of them, they, they, they just land up like this, like this. So they all work at the same pace, right? So the, 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 the hard workers are being, you know, demotivated by the lazy ones. Because we are all doing the same, same thing. thing. Uh -huh. So okay, I said, no, now we are going to share everybody and your portion. When we finish, you, you can go. go home. I'm telling you, by 12 o'clock, they're gone. You see, that is socialism you know, and capitalism. You know, because if you do socialism, hmm. like talk about the brain, right? They say um, poverty is the mother of invention, right? We are not poor. We are not poor. We all know it. That if you are doing something together with our checks, I will not give up my best. Because even my best will not be recognized. You know, so you all sit down. You all sit on the bench. So for me, I don't believe in socialism. That's why East Germany and Western Germany, I don't know whether you knew that there were two Germanys, right? Yeah. yeah. The, the, the Eastern Germanys were jumped the wall to the Western Germanys. Why? Eastern was socialist inclined, eh? and the West was capitalism. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so the East was very poor, but the West was rich. So that's why, personally, I don't believe in socialism, but I believe in hard work. Yes, but socialism does not motivate people to work. Look at the view. Can you see the view? Look at the view. I said, I should go and stay in Accra. You lose the view. Uh, Okada, Accra, <laughs> Okada, Bay. Eh? Okada and the, no, no, no. And the traffic. No. No. So this one is not by accident. I think almost about 30 years ago, I decided to come here. So I, I started <coughs> doing a palm plantation mm. here. Mm. So that when, when I retire, I'll come and stay in my palm plantation. But very unfortunately, Ghana, if you are not close to your business, it doesn't succeed. It doesn't succeed. So I, I abandoned it. So that I struggled, but because I did, I knew that I'll come one day, one day. You know, that's why I have some land here. Some land. I have a, a, a bit of land that I can farm. You know, all year round. Yeah. So. So for me, because Ghana or Africa or the black race, we want cheap things. That is why, uh, with all due respect, there's so many one-man churches in the system you know, enriching themselves at the expense with the poor. Because they know that I'm going there, I'll get, I'll get money. I go to that place, I'll get money. And they are not taking, are not taking money from you. you know? And they are very rich. That's a very vibrant business in Ghana now. You know, if you are smart and we are charismatic, just get some drums and we are good to go. You know, and Ghanaians are going there thinking you create some word for them. You know, so for me, I will not come to you to say, pray for me. Yeah. Eh? I'll tell me, go and bring incense. I, 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 I'll add food or water, so I'll add something, water, and I'll sell food to you. No, that's, that's why you are poor. Our poverty that you ask me whether you can uh, wake up, you know, this, 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 this is the result of it. You, know, yeah. you want um, free goodies, free goodies. You know, the white, they work a lot. The Chinese man, you go, you talk, they, he works a lot. The Germans, they like machines. You know, when they come to, when they come to um, my factory, when you go to um, America, you employ the cleaners, you know, they are mostly from um, Mexico, eh? the Latinos. They are like machine. Boom, 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 They clean, they go away. You know? Why you clean, go and get a, a local person? So that, that's our problem. It's actually hard work. Simple. You know, yeah. 
you know. One, knowledge, wisdom, hard work. That's it. These three things, you know. It's the key to success. Yeah, to success. That's it. If, if you do so, even win lottery. Millions of dollars of lotteries. Eh? Two years' time, some of them will go back to the streets. If they are, if they are, they are, they are, they are um, street, street guys, they go there, you know. So, success is not um, just by, by, by accident. You know, how to plan it. You know? and so, if, if you don't plan it and you believe in uh, spiritism, that some juju man oh. can do quick, 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 quick for you to succeed, so can I be rich? I don't see any rich person in Ghana. Nope. Ghana here? No. As far as I know, there's not even one single soul in Ghana who is rich. No. Who, oh, tell me one. What is your tell definition for riches then? Rich person is a person who has got wealth, right? Wealth, a lot of wealth, you know, and also giving it out. Yes. No. You have got the, 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 the bank, you can say the billionaire, dollar, dollar money, dollar terms, big money in a bank, right? Yes. And you also give impact to society. society. You know, you can't just send a radio and make men and say I'm rich. You get a government contract. You, you go and inflate the, 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 the prices and say you are rich. No. So if a government is not there, you're not then, there. Then, then you are not there. So that's artificial richness. It's not rich. It's cooked rich. Richness is what you have sweat yourself. You know, to generate, to survive all the, survive the storm. You know, because you don't allow the government. I don't, I've never allowed on government. No, nope. nope. it's by myself. So if you go to Ghana, Ghana definition, whether it's NDC, whether it's a MPP, we are moving on because I will not go and get me government to buy my water before I become rich. Why? Well, why is it that? You hardly out there because I have never seen you anywhere. <laughs> That's a tough one anyway. <laughs> but you see, see, for me, I don't believe being out there would add any value to what I'm doing. You see, uh, you know, what, I, what I'm talking about, you see, eagle. When the eagle want to hunt, you know, it's, it's steadies, uh, it's prey, you know, and go direct straight and pick it. You know that. Mm. The sea. Yeah. If you, even they can even catch snakes, you know. Yeah. Tell it and pick it and tell it go. So I focus. Not being flamboyant. You know, uh, so so mine is focus, focus, focus. You know, the fact God gave us two years. Hmm? How many maps? One. One. Why? Any reason? To listen more. More and talk less. You know, I, I also did not know you. I know the brand Casa Precum, yes. right? And I'm a big fan of African-owned businesses. And I was tracing like African-owned beverages in Ghana and Casa Precum came. So okay. I was doing research and I'm like, who is the person behind Casa Precum? <laughs> and that's how I got to know. The, the mystic man. <laughs> <laughs> I got to know you. So I had to, I had to, re <laughs> I had to reach out to uh -huh. Richard. Richard and Richard, Richard was like, you know what, it's my dad, but my dad doesn't like talking. Uh -huh. But how are we going to do it? And I'm like, Richard, you know what, you're not a story. Even if it's going to take me one year for me to get your dad, I'm going to wait. Do you know that it's been a year? Really? Trying to get you. Okay. So I think Richard has done a great that job. That is quite persistence. Yeah. You, you, you are good. Yeah. I, you, can easily, you can easily succeed. So it's good that... I you, never give up, I yeah. Never give up. Uh -huh. yeah. So, uh, yeah, said one thing that uh, I believe uh, it also motivate me. He said, it's always good to be a first class Ghanaian and a second class European. What makes you a first class Ghanaian? Because I'm a Ghanaian. By, 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 by birth. I'm proud to be a Ghanaian. You know, so if I even go and take a, a second citizenship in America, see, I'm just going to buy the citizenship. Uh, so they call me Africa American. Why oh, are that African American? I'm not American. Yeah, so by definition, I'm Africa and American, you know, but here I'm a Ghanaian. If you made it this far, let me tell you something. Your life will never be the same. So like the video, subscribe, turn on post notification so that you won't miss the next update. See you on the next one.
on how one man transformed an entire village. I know you're going to love it. See you tomorrow. Thank you.